Okay, today I would like to show you an example for using Talon with Spark together in order to train, test, and use a machine learning model for classification. First, I would like to present the use case. I have chosen a use case from the UCI machine learning repository where you can find datasets from machine learning as well as descriptions and papers related to, this, to the datasets. I have chosen the adult dataset which contains 14 attributes about adult person such as uh, age, work class, education, occupation, gender, etc. We will be able to take a look at the data later. The purpose is to predict one of two possible outcomes. If a person has an annual income of over 50k US dollars or under 50k US dollars per year. In total we have a data set that is already labeled with uh, over or under 50k. The total data set consists of 48k records. I have decided to divide the data set into two parts. The training data set will consist of 32k records and the testing data set will consist of 16k. You could do it, do it differently, divide it in any way you want. However, make sure the training data set and the testing data set do not overlap. A quick look at the description of the data. First, we have two labels, so basically two possible outcomes. If a person makes over 50k dollars a year or under 50k dollars a year. Other than that, we have 14 attributes to describe this person. Um, things like continuous attributes, which are basically integers like age and uh, education number of years, and things that are like strings with a fixed set of attributes, such as um, native country, for example, a closed list of all the countries that uh, um, a person might have come from. So I'm using Talent uh, version 6.2 for big data. Uh, inside we'll run local locally Spark version 1.6. You could do it also with earlier versions. Uh, you don't however have to install Spark because that comes built in with uh, the Talent Studio. Spark is using machine learning libraries to do the classification that also is built in. And of course the big advantage of Spark is that if you are not running only on a small data set like I do and you want to either build your model based on a big data set or use this model to predict the data on a larger scale, you can deploy this job uh, into a cluster and run on massive data sets. Let's take a quick look at the job I've built. I've created a Spark Pet job, so you can see on the right side you have the machine learning classification components. There are basically two sub-jobs here. The first one is the one we will use to train and create the model. We are using the training data in it. The second one is not really necessary. It's only to test and evaluate the model that we've created. You can basically directly use it if you want, but I've created this one to get a precision score for my model. In the first uh, sub-job, we will read the training data and we'll do some transformation that will just uh, I'm about to discuss and then we create the model. In this case we can either use the model directly in the tpredict or we can save it to a file. Before we create a statistical model we must go through some pre-steps to prepare the data. The original input data is a comma separated record. Here we can see 14 attributes regarding a person and finally a label. This person, for example, is a 39-year-old, never married, white male from the United States. And finally, the label says that he's making less than 50k a year. The first transformation will take all of these continuous integers value and transform them, uh, transform them into doubles. That's pretty simple. However, the input of the model cannot accept these free text strings. We will use a transformation that is called string indexer to convert these strings into doubles, which is one of the possible values for each attribute. So for example, if there are for 
20 possible countries of origin, each country will be assigned a number of 0 to 19. And so in this case you can see that the United States gets value number 0. Let's take, a, let's take a look at how this looks in the Spark talent job. So of course I created a um, Spark batch job which is generating Spark code and the first step is to read the training file right with all of the comma separated values. The second step I use a t-model encoder that will do the string indexer transformation that I just mentioned. It's very simple to configure this. We are going to pass along all of the columns. In case of integers, or in this case I already changed it to double, we're just going to read them as they are without changing anything. However, in case of strings, we are going to create a new name. For example, work class will be work class underscore v for vector. And we are going to use here a transformation string indexer as I mentioned before. The second and last transformation is to take these values, all the attributes, and put them in one, one specific vector in one field and create another column only for the label. The way it would look is like this. Here you can see that on the right, on the left side you have the first column which is one vector with all the values and the second column is the label, which in this case is zero. Another possible representation of this vector is a dense representation that is created by the same component without you doing anything just to save space for you. So if there are a lot of zeros in your vector, it will do something like this. It will give you the number of attributes altogether, 14 in this case, and then the order of the attributes. And whatever is zero will not be, will not appear here. So for example here, the third or fourth one is zero, attribute number three, so it's not here. Same thing with five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, and twelve. And the only ones that appear here are the ones that are not zero. Of course the label appears anyway. The second transformation in the job is achieved again by another T model encoder. We take the output of the last component, we put another T model encoder. The input here doesn't matter because we define a new uh, output, a vector, which is of type vector, as you can see here. Vector of type vector. And a label, which is of top type double. The way we create this is we use the vector assembly transformation and the arguments that we will give here are basically the following. We will do input calls equals and then the names of all of the columns that are going in age, comma, work, class, underscore v, etc. including everything. And that will give us the output of the vectors as I've shown before. The next part is to connect this to a statistical model creation component. Here we can use uh, almost any one of the classification components that we have in talent. I have chosen for, uh, first logistic regression, which is um, the statistical way of calculating a model that has more than one independent um, variable and two possible label classes. Um, which is suitable for our use case. I didn't do anything to configure or tune the parameters. I leave them as they were. Uh, of course, it's possible to go deeper and tune it further if you know more about the algorithm and the parameters. The statistical model that we created could be saved to a file. By clicking here, we, it could be on the HDFS or on your local file system <clears throat> and then could be used in a separate job later on or in this case we are going to create the model and keep it in the job and use it with this tpredict later. <clears throat> so the next step is we want to test the model. We will read the test file that uh, has all the 
records that we did not use for the training and we'll, we'll pass them on to the tpredict here. The tpredict has a very simple schema. I'm basically passing on all of the input and it will add a label which is the prediction. The next part it will, it will be to compare the classification that we made with the label and see if we were correct or not. And I do that by using a tmap and a very simple comparison of the label and the classification. The classification being the original uh, label from the file and the label is the new one that we have predicted using the statistical model. Um, you can see that if it's 0 or 1, I will determine that by if it's equal to less than 50k and then basically having a 1 and 0 which will then aggregate using the T aggregated row and print the result. What happens now is you can see I've already run this, you can see that this model has su successfully predicted 13,585 out of the 16k and that is approximately 84% uh, precision. So basically what we achieved here is almost out of the box creating a statistical model for this data set that, that managed to have an 84% precision rate. Um, what you can do to try to improve that is you can replace the logistic regression with other um, classification models. For example, I use the decision tree here. So it's basically the same job. I just replaced the logistic regression with decision tree. And for the last time I ran the same job with a random forest. Of course, you can also dig deeper and try to um, tune the parameters of each and every one of those algorithms. And the final thing you can also do is play a little bit with the data sets, add more records to the training or reduce records from the training and see if you get a better model. But from what I've seen in the UCI repository, the papers that are talking about this data set have managed to, with a lot of thought prob probably, get to a precision rate of 89. So I would say 84 is pretty good for almost no work. And that could be later applied for uh, real use cases and real um, classifications. Let's take a look at the results finally before I end off. So as I said, I tried these three different classification algorithms and I got more or less the same results on all of them. I would say that's a pretty good result for almost no work and pretty easy to create this job. That's all for me for today. Have a good day. Bye-bye.